For the Detroit Lions, looking for a shutdown corner is probably one of their top priorities this offseason. Could it be entirely possible that this overlooked corner in the draft could be the answer to their prayers? We're going to talk about it in today's episode, folks, so stay tuned. What are we? What makes us what we are and what we're going to be? It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. It doesn't matter if you have one ass cheek and three toes. I will beat your ass. Can definitely compete with, with, with the big dogs. 10-5, end zone, touchdown, Detroit Lions. You guys, you guys are unbelievable, man. I, I'm telling you. We are driven by Detroit. Hello everyone, and welcome back to yet another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. I'm your host, David T. Pike, and as always, we're diving in. So, here's the thing, folks. Obviously, for us Lions fans, we realize that for this offseason, we know that the defense has been the top priority. We know that the defense has been probably the most worked on thing that the Lions have been trying to get fixed, they've been trying to shore up, they've been trying to strengthen, and they have done, I would say, a somewhat... I would say decent job, interesting job of having done it. Because let's understand something here. The Lions have so far made quite a lot of acquisitions to trying to fix the defense or at the very least adding depth and rotational pieces to the defense. Now, when we're talking about the cornerback position, which is by far probably the most heavily scrutinized position outside of the edge rushing one this offseason... The Lions have so far, at the time I'm recording this, have added two cornerbacks to their free agency uh, list. They might be adding more by the time this is released. But what I'm trying to simply say is this. The Lions have definitely realized, they have definitely made a high emphasis of adding more cornerback talent to the Lions, you know, cornerback room. They want to make sure that there is enough talent, there is enough to look at to potentially get the best men on the field. Now, when we take a look at what the Lions currently have on the roster at the moment that I'm recording this, the Lions currently have Carlton Davis, they have Cameron Sutton, Amik Robertson, Emmanuel Mosley, Stephen Gilmore, Khalil Dorsey, and a guy by the name of Craig James that I have never heard of. But those right there are the seven cornerbacks that the Lions currently have. Now, I'm going to say this right off the bat. While both Carlton Davis and, you know, Cameron Sutton are the most likely guys that are going to be the full-time starters, neither is what I would consider a true lockdown or shutdown corner. They have moments where they can be good, but neither of them would be considered in the NFL a lockdown or a shutdown corner. And again, I fully believe that the Lions are going to add a true difference maker to the cornerback room. And at this point, the only way that they can do that is if they decide to trade for one, which I don't think is highly likely because they've already traded for Carlton Davis, or what I think is the truly most likely option is they're going to find one in the draft. Now, some people might be saying, well, David, what about Gilmore? What about Mosley? Understand something here. I still don't know what to expect out of Mosley because, again, <laughs> we've only seen him for two plays. And as far as Gilmore is concerned, I like what I saw out of him in the preseason. But again, preseason is a completely different beast compared to the regular season. I sure as hell hope he gets more reps and I hope he gets a chance to compete and a chance to actually, you know, get out on the field and get meaningful reps in regular season. But until that time, so far, the only guys that we have virtually almost anything to work with are Cam. Cameron Sutton, Carlton Davis because he played with the Bucks last year, and Amik Robertson because he played with the Raiders. So at that point, it's like there's not really much to go off of as far as film is concerned, at least over the last season or two. Now, it is my firm hope, as I've said in a previous episode, I'll put the episode link back up at the top, that the Lions go out and they get Kool-Aid. I want them to get Kool-Aid McKinnistry because of the fact that I consider him to be the best cornerback option that the Lions will most likely be able to nab at pick number 29. Again, I've been paying very close attention to the mock draft simulators, and from what I keep seeing, Kool-Aid will very much likely be available at pick number 29 unless somebody does something rather peculiar or, number two, at Kool-Aid's Pro Day, he does something that really wows a lot of people and sends his stock up through the draft board. Now, 
That's why I'm saying he is still a possibility at number 29. But again, I believe in having options. I believe in having backup plans because I do not like going into any situation and just, as they would say, putting all my eggs in one basket. First and foremost, I think that's just a stupid strategy altogether. But at the same time, I think it's good to have options in case, you know, for whatever reason, something else goes down, you find out some new information, whatever have you. So, why are we having this conversation about this cornerback? Well, the reason why the cornerback that we're about to have this conversation is is because, well, virtually nobody's really talking about him. But I have seen his game film, I have seen his stats, and this guy is a guy that has vastly gone overlooked. And that is... Iowa State's cornerback TJ Tampa. Now... What is so important? What is so impressive about Tampa? Well, Tampa, if you take a look at his stats and you take a look at how Iowa State has been the last couple of years, he has definitely been a cornerstone for that Iowa State defense over the last two seasons, and he has literally exemplified for that team what would be considered a shutdown corner. Again, I'm going to show you guys some highlights here so that way you guys can get kind of an idea. But this guy is tall, and the one thing you definitely will notice in the highlights is this guy has a great blend of both press man coverage and off zone coverage. This guy has the ability to play both impressed man or off zone. He's able to high point the ball. He's able to make sure that he's in good space for wherever he's on the field. This dude has the traits. He has the ability to be a lockdown corner. Now the question though, as I've said earlier, is that this guy is not really getting a whole lot of notice. He's not getting a whole lot of talk, which again, you have to understand the situation for what it is. Most of the time when people talk about cornerbacks, they're usually talking about guys that'll go in the first round. TJ Tampa is considered a guy that is most likely to go in the top of the second round. And the reason for that is, is because again, let's consider the cornerbacks that are currently right now in the first round as considered prospects. You've got Kool-Aid, you've got Terry and Arnold, you've got the one guy, uh, Mitchell, you've got another guy in Nate Wiggins. There's already four or five different cornerbacks that are scheduled to potentially go in the first round. So Tampa being outside of that, a fringe candidate, he's just simply not getting as much notice as compared to those guys, which I think is a cry and shame because this guy I think is the one cornerback that people should be talking about more, but nobody is. Now, I will say this also about him. The one thing I really like about him, and you definitely saw in those highlights, this dude physically dominates his opponents. He dominates wide receivers. He has no problem in getting into people's grill and being physical with them off the line, which is definitely something you want out of a cornerback. You don't want a cornerback that's just going to give up room, that's just going to give up yards and room. You want them to have to fight for every yard within that five-yard limit. But the other thing I also like about him is this guy also loves to crash down and he also likes to provide run support help. And again, that is something that we know that our cornerbacks have to do for the Detroit Lions. They absolutely must be able to not only provide run support, but they have to be able to provide quality run support. We want guys that are willing tacklers and that are good tacklers. So again, this is something that I like to see out of TJ Tampa. This is a guy that's able to provide good coverage and he's a willing and decent participant in the run game. Obviously can stand to get better in that area. But for the most part, I like what I see out of him. And then again, when you take a look at over the last two years that he was at Iowa State, as far as the stats are concerned, I'm first going to show you what the combined total is, and then I'm going to show you each year so that way you guys can get kind of an idea of how much he is progressing. So when you take a look at the total of 2022 and 2023, you see a guy that gave up 45 receptions out of 92 targets, which was only a 48.9% reception rate. So again, very, very sticky coverage, very hard hard for quarterbacks to try and get a completion on him. He only gave up 488 yards over the total of two seasons. Three touchdowns to three interceptions, so one for one, that's pretty good. And a passer rating that he gave up over those two years was a combined 62.2 passer rating. So again, overall, in those two years, he did absolutely amazing. Then when you take a look at the difference between 2022 and 2023, you will see the progression, as I would like to call it, in terms of his ability to get even better. In 2022, he gave up 20 receptions to 43 targets, which was for 46.5 completion percentage rate. He gave up 248 yards, two touchdowns to one interception for a 70.7 passer rating. 
Then in 2023, he gave up 25 receptions for 49 targets, so just a smidge over 50%. 240 yards. He gave up one touchdown and actually got two interceptions and had a passer rating that was substantially even lower of 54.8. So what you're seeing is not only the consistency of this guy to be able to play year to year, but you're seeing that progression. It's getting harder for quarterbacks to try and throw on him, hence the reason that the passer rating is going down and hence the reason that he's garnering more interceptions. So what you are seeing is his ability to take over a side of a field, to be a lockdown corner because what it tells me is this quarterbacks don't like to target him and number two when they do target him it's not usually going to end well for the quarterback or for the wide receiver in terms of a completion or in terms of them getting anywhere so for me it's like okay if you can limit quarterbacks and wide receivers from being able to do much against you, that to me fits within the parameters of what you would call a lockdown or a shutdown corner. Now I understand this guy is a rookie, so it's a little hard to say that a guy is going to be a lockdown or shutdown corner as soon as he steps into the NFL. I'm not necessarily saying that that's what's going to happen with this young man, but what I am saying is the traits are there. The ability for him to be that kind of a cornerback is definitely there. And the best part for him, in my opinion, is this. He's got two veterans that are in front of him that play outside. And technically, you can also include Emmanuel Mosley in that. These are guys that have played outside. He can learn from them and develop his skills and get better progress before you technically, you know, throw him out there to the wolves on day one. So what I'm simply trying to say is this. If the Lions are looking for a guy who has the traits that you can develop into being that shutdown corner, which I truly believe TJ Tampa can be, and you're not necessarily going to have the chance to get a guy like Kool-Aid, this guy definitely fits the palette. He definitely fits the bill. I would say, hey, if you can't get Kool-Aid, but you're still looking for a top-notch corner, by all means, please, for the love of God, draft this dude. Do not say say, well, maybe we're going to trade out or maybe we're going to go somewhere else. No, please get this guy. This guy is definitely an excellent number two option if you can't get Kool-Aid. And again, I always 100% firmly believe you need to have options when you go into draft night. And if there's one thing I know Brad Holmes does better than anybody else, he definitely researches every single potential option that he has at his disposal. That is why Brad Holmes almost is never, as far as I can tell from what we've seen with video recordings and everything else he is never surprised he's never caught off guard and he's never not in a position to potentially make a move for a player that he wants and TJ Tampa to me seems like a player that could definitely fit in with what the Lions are looking for as far as what they need in a cornerback but also what they could potentially progress and groom into one because again I like the idea of potentially letting this guy sit maybe get some meaningful reps but don't let him be the full-time starter necessarily but We'll see what happens. I just like to present opportunities for guys and gals that watch my channel to say, hey, this is somebody that I may not have considered. Or, hey, you know what? Somebody who might have considered, you might get a little bit more information. Or just say, hey, I've thought about him in the past. I think that this is a good idea. It's also that way you guys can get more information. You guys can have a good time watching the content. But having said that, this content has reached its conclusion, so I'm going to say thank you all for watching in another episode of MCM Motor City Mania. If you like what you saw, by all means, I highly encourage you all to watch the next episode. I also encourage you all, please, to do one of these three things. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. If by chance you subscribed in the past and you forgot to do so at the time, or you just subscribed and you not had a chance to do so, again, please subscribe. It helps me out ever so much, and I'm thankful for every subscription I can get. But also, please, make sure you turn on that bell notification icon at the bottom so that way you never miss any more content that I push out. Again, subscription numbers are always going up, but we want to make sure you guys turn on that notification icon so that way you guys never miss any more content that I push out. And with that, I just want to also thank you guys all for everything that you do. You guys are absolutely awesome. I hope you all are having a great day. I hope you have something that makes you smile and makes you happy. And with that being said, I just want to say thank you all for watching the content. I hope you all enjoyed it. God bless. And until the next time we meet, I'll see y'all in the next episode.